Versace and Coach under the same roof? What is going on? So the word on the street is Tapestry Inc. is buying Capri Holdings, which means that brands like Coach, Versace, Kate Spade, Michael Kors, Stuart Weitzman, and Jimmy Choo will soon all be under the same umbrella of a parent company. But what does this mean? Before we dive in though, hey guys, my name is Caleb. I post luxury and lifestyle related content when every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. If that's something you're into, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Consider joining, becoming a member, joining us over on the Discord. We have a ton of fun and I can't wait to see you guys over there. So check out memberships. Today we're asking ourselves like what's what's going on? Like what's this deal mean? And what's it gonna look like in the future for brands like Michael Kors, Jimmy Choo, Stuart Weitzman, Kate Spade, the whole gambit basically of American contemporary brands. So for those of you who aren't aware, let me start at the beginning. So Coach is owned by Tapestry Inc. It was originally Coach Inc. back in the day when I worked there, which is probably aging me, but that's another story for another day. But Tap Tapestry owns three iconic American brands. They currently have Coach as their, their main flagship brand. They've revived Kate Spade, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and they also own Stuart Weitzman. So three pretty iconic American contemporary brands, right? And this merger, it's, it's going to be Tapestry taking over Capri Holding. So Capri Holding currently owns three iconic brands, Michael Kors, Versace, and Jimmy Choo. What does this merger mean? And $8.5 billion, is it a steal? Is it a deal? What, what's going on here? I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so before today, I've watched a lot of Bloomberg. I've, I've read up on the New York Times. Like, like what, what, does this, what does this merger mean for us as consumers? And I think that quite honestly, this merger is coming at a very smart time, especially here in the American economy. So currently a lot of Americans, you know, speaking from experience, maybe you are too, we're, we're being a little bit more conservative with our wallets. We're, we're kind of reining in our discretionary spending. I don't know about you, but during the pandemic, I did a lot of luxury shopping, especially online, because we're all stuck at home. We, we were envisioning these beautiful lives out and about, traveling again, the handbags that go with it. And I think we all went a little overboard. You know, admit it. I know you know, between us, this is just between friends, safe space. Because of that, a lot of Americans are pulling back with, like I said, their, their, their fun money, their play money, and they're putting in other categories. So here in the States, we are seeing a hit across the luxury sector. Case in point, Louis Vuitton was rumored to have a price increase, and then it disappeared. Like it never existed. It evaporated, thank goodness, because they have way too many. I do not believe that it costs nearly two grand to make a plastic speedy. I said what I said, safe space. So this, this merger honestly couldn't come at a better time. So basically what they're doing is they're combining brands, synergy, if you will, you gotta love, you know, a gym reference. They're combining these brands and they're looking to take on, you know, especially the Asian market, the European market. They're, they're looking to expand internationally. Together, I think that they're, they're stronger together, quite honestly. They can pull money, they can pull their resources, and it's gonna be a lot more direct to consumer purchasing. I mean, here in the States, for my viewers who aren't from the States or in the States right now, basically Coach Michael Kors Kate Spade can be found in every single American mall and then every single outlet that dots the highways between any major two cities. And because of this oversaturation, this really led to, I think, Michael Kors, his kind of demise with his brand. It was, it was oversaturated, it was super popular, don't get me wrong. And back in the late 2000s, it was gorgeous. He had just come off of Celine. We had the boogie bag, which I still really want in my collection. Another day, we're on the Birkin journey. <laughs> Catch up with that on my Hermes playlist. Basically, we got sick of Michael Kors. I'm speaking for us as a group. You may still love Michael Kors and that is your jam. I am not here to judge you. However, Michael Kors as a whole, I think just became way too oversaturated. Because of that, his, his brand wasn't really bringing in the revenue that it used to. Over the last four quarters, Michael Kors as, as a brand itself only brought in 3.9 billion in revenue over the last four quarters, which, you know, considered against 4.9 billion just in coach revenue alone is a far cry. Especially Especially considering when the next brand, the next top earner for Capri Holding was Versace at a measly 1.1 and Jimmy Choo at only 0.6 billion. So they're a pretty far cry away from where, where Tapestry Inc. is. We've seen Tapestry Inc. We've seen what they can do. Like they've turned around Coach at least once or twice. And remember, you know, the Reed Krakow era was a turnaround. Everyone fell off Coach in like the mid to late 2010s. And now it's like hot again with like the Rogue, the Ruby, the Tabby bag, which I have. And you know, the cash and totes and all the different limited editions they're doing. They also brought that same success to Kate Spade. However, one has to ask, like, with all of these very similar brands across the same holding group, is it all going to be a little one note? You know, like, is it going to be like Kate Spade, who, well, although it's still very whimsical, 
kind of, for me anyways, lost that Kate Spade spirit that we became, you know, that we became so used to in the 2000s and the 2010s. I think it's, I mean, it's still fun, it's still whimsical, but it's just, it's missing that little something at this point. At the end of the day, for the investors, the shareholders, it's, it's all just numbers. So they don't really care that, you know, the Kate Spade has the whimsy, but not that, that something. So as long as they can get Michael Kors up to or where it was, you know, 10 years ago, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Now, my question is, though, I think that the way they're going to position the brands, they're going to have Versace as the crown jewel. Are they going to be able to reinvigorate that brand, give it that like extra oomph that it used to have, especially back in the Gianni era, like that is like peak Versace. Sorry, Donatella. I mean, the materials currently at Versace are just not impressive. So what I said, safe space. I mean, I shouldn't be able to buy their La Medusa handbag and it's covered, not just the chain, but literally covered in plastic hardware. At that price point, that's a huge bummer. Like I get it, chains are heavy, but make it make sense, right? So moving forward, I think that the internal workings of this new merger, it's gonna be kind of more to the tapestry management style. So I do think we're gonna see some redundancies, maybe some layoffs from the Capri holding side, just because, you know, there's already gonna be those two positions. You can't have, can't have, you know, two of everybody. So I think we are gonna see a shift as far as the Capri holding group goes. But I think as a whole under the tapestry nameplate, I don't know, I'm kind of excited to see where we go with this. Now, I know a lot of folks, you know, forecasters, analysts, they're, they're trying to compare this to LVMH. I think we're, we're quite a ways away from that. I think, you know, in the coming years after they've joined hands, you know, we might see a, an increased revenue up to 12 billion for, the, for all six brands as a whole. However, I don't think we're quite at the LVMH level. And the reason that I have that, that notion or that, that idea is because when you think of LVMH, it encompasses all lifestyle brands. You have everything as low as Sephora, Hennessy, like you have all these different Louis Vuitton, like all these different like core luxury brands all under one roof. And I mean, Tiffany and Company, hello. Like as far as, you know, Tapestry Inc. goes, you have two very similar brands between Michael Kors and Coach. Versace, that's kind of a, an off the wall brand for them. I, I still cannot wrap my head around that that was part of Michael Kors for a minute. A very weird couple of years. And then you have Stuart Weitzman and Jimmy Choo both doing shoes. So I, I don't know, like, as far as brand strength goes, if, if we're quite to the, the point where we can call them a caring or an LVMH. But it's exciting to kind of see where this might be headed. Is this, is this a contemporary monopoly? Or are we going to see, like, a lot of exciting things and, and more of a global network of brands? I don't know. Time will tell. But I think as far as right now, I don't think the consumer is going to notice a whole lot of difference between the merger and, and afterwards. Hopefully Michael Kors and, and Versace get a little better, but one can hope, right? I hope this was interesting for you guys. Rather than just talk about a brand or a bag today, we're kind of we're kind of using our business savvy. We're, we're in the boardroom. We're, we're taking notes and we're, we're merging companies. I own 51%. All that jazz. Anyway, I hope you had fun. Until next time, guys, stay safe, have fun. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.